dwarf cow and many pigs. Hey guys, it's Kelsey from Sweet Bar Farm. Thanks for joining us today. We're super excited. Mike and I are gonna bring our bull, Mr. President, and our new chondro positive Dexter heifer ladybug together in a breeding pen. Um, so stay tuned and you'll get to see us put these two together. We're super excited to see what kind of calf we'll get out of ladybug. Should be in September. Chondro carriers have existed in the Dexter breed since the development of the breed in the early 1800s. Dexters were once known as the poor man's cattle due to their small size and efficiency on poor pasture. The small size was selected for and unknowingly some of the small size was due to the chondro dysplasia carriers. It wasn't until the early 2000s the test for uh, chondro dysplasia was developed for Dexters, so it wasn't until relatively recently breeders were able to knowingly breed for carriers or for non-carriers. So with our bull breeding ladybug, uh, statistically 50% of her offspring will be short-legged or chondro carriers and 50% will be non-chondro carrier or long legs. But ultimately it's the personal choice of why someone breeds the trait uh, for the trait or against the trait. We feel since there's no risk for a bulldog calf with our pairing of Ladybug and Mr. President that there's nothing wrong with breeding a chondro carrier. So if you watch our farm interview tour of two men and a hen that I'll, I'll link below in the comments or in the description. They had a chondro cow live until just before her 22nd or 23rd birthday I believe and I believe her last calf was born when she was about 20 years old uh, before they retired her. So chondro carriers can live long healthy lives and it all boils down to the to the confirmation. Other breeds that we know love them and have selected for well-conformed heifers and bulls for breeding stock and they cull the others with poor confirmation for beef. We wanted a chondro carrier since we really love the Dexters and wanted to have a representative of each of the colors as well as a shorty. Some of the advantages for the chondro carriers are the forage conversion so less feed is required. Now Dexters are really efficient on grass alone to begin with but the chondro carriers are even more efficient. Um, there's a higher meat to bone ratio than non-carriers basically due to their truncated uh, limbs and they're easier to handle of course that's subjective but their smaller size usually does make them easier to handle and what other breeders say is that they have even more docile temperaments than their long leg dexter counterparts and they tend to fatten up faster So Ladybug is a chondro carrier, Dexter, which means she's heterozygous for the dwarfism allele. We're breeding her to our bull, Mr. President. He's chondro negative, so he's homozygous for normal long legs. So when we breed these two together, there's a 50% chance that we'll have a calf that has short legs like Ladybug and is chondro positive or there's another 50% chance she'll produce a calf that has long legs like the dad, Mr. President. Both of these cattle are A2A2, uh, so we know for sure whatever calf they produce will also be A2A2. 
and all the calves out of Mr. President should also be born polled because he's homozygous for polled and polled is dominant. So we're expecting a polled A2A2 calf. So the big question mark is going to be color and how long the calf's legs will be. Sure he's not going to be special. You got a new lady friend there, Mr. P. In the near future, we're going to make a video where we talk about the science behind A2A2 milk proteins and what that means. Um, but the short version uh, is that there are two major types of milk proteins, A1 and A2. A2 milk proteins are easier for some people to digest. Most people have no problem with A1. That's something that is a trait that a lot of homesteaders are looking for in their cattle. So that was why it was something we were looking for in our breeding stock animals as well. Checking out your new quarters. Guess he'll be interested when she's ready. So hopefully soon Ladybug should come into heat. We've had her for like, what, three weeks now? Yeah, something like that. And we haven't seen her come into heat yet, so she should be cycling very soon. But I don't think she's in heat right now because Mr. President's way more interested in the salad bar than his new friend. But soon it will be. One of the reasons we like to use this pen for breeding is because we can see it from our kitchen window. So we'll keep a close eye on these two and wait for the magic. If you're looking at the size difference, you might be thinking we're nuts. Uh, but it is common practice in the Dexter world to breed a regular sized bull to a chondro carrying heifer. And um, Ladybug will fill out her as she ages, but she's already 18 months old, which is about four months older than when most heifers get bred for their first time. So everything should be fine. So if you notice, Ladybug just peed, and then Mr. President came over and he was smelling the pee and lifting up his upper lip. That's called the Fraumann reflex, and we see it in lots of different animals. I've seen my goats do it too. Uh, it seems like even our boars do it. Deer do it. And deer do it. Um, obviously cattle do it too, but it's a way for them to get like a better sense of the smells that are coming in. So he's kind of like a living ovulation predictor. So he's just tell it, testing her urine to see if she's ready to be bred. And it looks like he agrees today's not the day, but he'll keep a close eye on her. So they're in here, just the two of them. He's going to keep a close eye and he's going to be the first one to know when Ladybug is ready. So because bulls are so good at knowing when a female's ready to be bred and they can meet that need day and night, because um, it usually they do breed more than once. That's one of the reasons we chose to go with a bull rather than trying to do AI, even though we have a very small herd. Uh, some people are successful doing AI with Dexters, but it's not something that's been selected for in the breed like it has been in the big dairy herds, like Holsteins and Jerseys. Those kinds of cattle are bred by AI all the time, um, but with Dexters, it's a little trickier. And uh, we felt like this was a better way to ensure success rather than messing around. 
it seems easier <laughs> for us getting started to just buy the bowl. He knows what to do. He'll take care of it rather than us messing around trying to figure out how to do AI. So like I said, Teddy will be the first one to know when Ladybug's ready, but some signs that we look for to know when our cattle are in heat are mostly their behaviors different. So um, usually when a female's in heat, everybody else in the herd wants to mount her. Uh, so one of the signs of being in heat, and this is true for other animals too, is the females will just stand still when they're in heat. So her behavior will be different. She'll kind of be acting more like a statue. And like right now she's in a new place, she's anxious and she's constantly pacing. That'll stop once we leave, but the behavior changes so they'll stand still. Also, we notice uh, some of our cows are really vocal when they're in heat. So like Greta will just like moo all day when she's in heat. We haven't seen Ladybug come into heat yet, so. We don't know if that's something she does, but vocalization is definitely something we see too. So those are kind of the two big things we look for. Another sign of heat is um, the females will have like mucus coming out of their lady parts, which is another sign that they're ready. So two of the things we always look for when we're checking out breeding animals is we want them to have a nice straight top line. So their backs are good and straight and you want their legs to be square underneath them. So no bowed legs. They should be standing like nice on the center of their hooves. They're not up on their tippy toes or back on their heels. They're just nice, well-balanced animals. <coughs> and since we do dual purpose our cattle, we also look for them to be nice and beefy. Like we want them to be really well muscled. So like a big neck, a nice big butt. Um, nice big shoulders so like we want thick dexters and then another trait that's just as important um, is utter confirmation so we've been trying to be choosy about the animals we bring home knowing that their dams have really nice udders they should have four teats sometimes cows have more than four and they function just fine our first dexter has more than four and she's raised two calves no problem but they're um, not functional yeah the extra teats are not functional that's true so we want to know that our cows come from good milking lines that helps for the bull on the boy parts you also want to have make sure that the teats are not connected too low on the boy part so mr presidents are up high on and not connected to that area so that's one thing that you look for in a breeding bull compared to our last bull the confirmation of mr president compared to our last bull our last bull was wider i guess taller width than mr p is um, but mr president is longer so we like the balance of him compared to our last bull um, he's longer. He's not as tall as our last bull. So I think we said he was we measured him at about 46 to the hip. Yeah So I'm, I'm six foot one and he comes right up to about my uh, above my Right to my diaphragm pretty much. So he's about 46 inches we figure And ladybug she's about 30 at the hip So main thing you look for when you're looking for a bull is the temperament Mr. President's temperament, like you can see. We're not worried about being in here with him. He's very calm, really easy to work with. So we can put a halter on him and as you've seen, lead him right up to this pen. Ladybug's still a little spicy on the halter, but her small size makes it easier to manage. Yeah. She's not 100% full grown. She will be more like a I guess like a, a propane tank, short legs and have a wider wider stance, wider body. So n another thing to look for when you're looking for a bull for breeding stock is their boy parts and their the conformation of those. You don't want one hanging too low, you want a nice symmetrical situation going on down there. Um, so it's a good trait that he has, nice uniform boy parts. We're not saying that he's the, the, the best conformed bull or anything like that, but he 
is what we are looking for in our animal. Um, the temperament, like I said, number one, and then the confirmation. So yeah, big time. Temperament matters more than anything else to us. We're raising these things in our backyard with our kids, so not literally in the same fence, but it matters in a big way for us. Something else that we're trying to breed for, which may not be obvious in this example, um, but we're not trying to breed for extremes in size. So Dexters are meant to be small cattle. Initially, they were very small and some breeders have bred them up to be beefier and some people have worked really hard to keep them down to their traditional really small size. So we're kind of just trying to breed the medium most animals. Like we don't want to breed the tiniest Dexters and we're not trying to breed the biggest beefiest Dexters either. We just want to breed Dexters that are what Dexters should be. We're trying to breed to the breed standard. The beef all tastes like beef. And it's so the good. milk will all taste like milk. Yeah. But if you're, if you breed for extremes, you're more likely to encounter health problems. Right, so by breeding for the mid-range for what a, this breed should be, then hopefully we'll be able to keep the healthiest animals that way. One of the biggest criticisms of people breeding the chondro positive Dexters, um, they say that they will live as long, they'll be full of arthritis from the breeders that we've talked to that raised them. They have not seen those issues, or maybe just in rare cases. Uh, which is why the confirmation is important. Having that straight top line, even centered legs and things like that, um, like Kelsey mentioned. Ladybugs should live a nice long life and be very productive for us. This is a, actually not a manure pile, which it looks like. It's snow and straw. I scraped it up as a wind block. They have the shed that they can go in to keep out of the wind. We get the west winds, northwest winds coming off that field. So I scraped that today just as a wind block. Chances are they'll go in the shed if it gets bad out, but they'll probably sleep outside too. So something to keep them out of the wind. Okay, well, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure that you like and subscribe to our channel. Uh, it really does make a huge difference to us. Um, and stay tuned for more fun on the farm with Sweetbriar Farm. <laughs>